Sometimes life feels unreal, like we're living in a fantasy movie. If you look at what some people believe, you'd think so. This is the craziest story ever. This is a story of how an animal, a red cow, is going to bring about the next stage of the apocalypse. <laughs> and how, for people that live in this world, this ties into the Israel and Palestine conflict. You see, some argue that this whole issue in that religion has nothing to do with religion, but I'm going to show you that it clearly does. I'm going to show you how the dogma has a very real effect on destabilizing the situation, how the fanatic believers on both sides that can truly destabilize the world. I'm going to show you how we would be better off without these wacky beliefs. Let's get into it. This is not a publicity stunt. Well, what do you mean? Meaning, this is something you take very seriously. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not story. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. So here's the deal. So before the Jewish Messiah can come back, the temple, the third temple has to be rebuilt. The third Jewish temple. And the sacrifice of this perfect red cow will trigger it. Where does this idea come from? Well, it must meet the following requirements as outlined in Numbers 19 and also in the oral tradition of the Talmud. One, it has to be absolutely perfect in its redness. Even two hairs of any other color would disqualify it. Even its hooves must be red. Two, it must be three or four years old, although older animals could be used, younger cannot. Three, it has to be free of any kind of internal or external defect or blemish. Four, it must not have been used for any type of physical labor and never been placed under your yoke, not even once. So these are the main conditions. As you can see, ironically, it kind of reminds you of the verse of the Quran where it talks about the sacrifice of a cow and how they wanted a cow that was like this and like that. It had to be not too young, not too old. Where does this come from? Well, it comes from the Old Testament, right? That's probably where the story came from or the inspiration for this story in the Quran. On Thursday afternoon, September 15, 2022, at 5 p.m., five flawless red heifers arrived in Israel. They were originally spotted in Texas and were flown all the way from the USA. The cows he's talking about at a secure, undisclosed location are these red heifers, to be precise. Some Jews and Christians believe they're the key to rebuilding the historic Jewish temple in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you just how long they've been trying to do this. Jew this. This article is more than eight years old, as it says on The Guardian. Jewish activists la launch crowdfunding appeal to breed perfect red heifer. Now, the interesting thing is, they're literally like, you know, you would think that the prophecy or whatever has to do with the fact that this is like a very uncommon thing to happen, like a perfectly red heifer. But what they're doing here is it like genetically, I don't know if it's genetically modified or selectively bred, they're trying to use human intelligence and science and agricultural science to, to breed the animal that will bring about the day of judgment. Like what an irony, like what a crazy story. They've been trying to do this for the messianic rituals since like forever basically, right? They, they believe that, you know, this miraculous red cow, imagine a cow, which is a Hindu, you know, some Hindus worship the cow. So here we have intersection of Hinduism. But in this case, they're going to sacrifice the cow and they're going to burn it into ashes. It's so weird on this giant altar, right? So anyways, it was founded in 1987, the Temple Institute, and they've been trying to do this, as I said, for basically decades now, right? And they think this is like the end of time or whatever. It's, it's just, it's wild. It's, it's just nuts. Like how, how much more crazy can you get? So here's the deal. We have three red genetically or selectively bred cows. We have a massive altar being made to sacrifice them, which has very pagan vibes. <laughs> Wait till you see it. A massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. We have them being flown to Jerusalem. So they, they not even from that area. They're from like the other part of the world. We have, and now here's where it gets interesting. 
We have Hamas catching wind of this and mentioning this in the October 7 attack. How much more crazy can this get? In a recent speech, a Hamas spokesman blamed the Jews for bringing red cows to the Holy Land. So you have these insane extremist Jews and you have these extreme extremist Muslims, right? Hamas and these guys. The intersection of Muslims and Jews both calling this Holy Land and not to mention adding some crazy evangelicals as well, as you're going to see, giving support to. A hornet's nest they're kicking all the way to Capitol Hill. So good to see you here in the nation's capital. Those sacred cows were showcased in Washington at a recent prayer gathering. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. And we need the Messiah to come, right? So for me, the red heifer is red for the blood of Jesus Christ. This is a powder keg. It's like an explosive situation. So let's go back. These guys have been at this game for a very long time, as we already said. But now they finally got what they wanted. So you're happy with it where it is? No, it's going to go 100%. But I believe it's going it, to go. It's 100%. Yeah, the whole thing is going to go. We have to build a temple. When you say that Dome of the Rock has to go, mm -hmm. MJ, it's hard for me to imagine something more incendiary. Well, let me ask you something. The Middle East seems pretty destabilized right now. And the war, if I'm not mistaken, is already here. A spokesman from Hamas gave this speech 100 days into the war precipitated by the massacre of October 7, bringing of red cows as an application of a detestable religious myth designed for aggression against the feelings of an entire nation in the heart of its Arab identity and the path of its prophet, the night journey and ascension to heaven. So we can see that based on the very own words, they're so like upset by this idea that the mosque is going to be taken back or demolished or whatever, that they decided to do this attack to kind of stop the rebuilding of the third temple, right? Like they clearly don't believe in this red cow, whatever prophecy, but they know they believe it and they can see that they probably believe that these guys are crazy, but their, their beliefs are not crazy. So all, both sides think the other side is crazy. And then of course, like I said, misguided Christians all over the world lending their support to one side or the other. So here's a big problem. If the Jewish extremists get their way and demolish Al-Aqsa, we're looking at worldwide riots. It's so sad that all of this suffering seems to be caused by an ancient stupid dogma that doesn't want to go away. Started from Judaism and then now in Islam. Of course, Christianity is not helping either. So now that we've seen just how this entire situation is truly caused by religion, we should see that we need to live in a post-religion world where we live in peace with, based on shared morality and values. We try to make the world a better place and leave these ancient dogmas in the past where they belong. Of course, religion comes with good things too. But then there's these terribly bad things that come with it as well. These like crazy beliefs. People think that messiahs are coming back, cows being slaughtered on these giant altars, like so weird and like being burnt into ashes. And like, it's so freaking weird. And people actually believe this is going to help the world, make it, make, make the messiah come back. So that's the end of this crazy story. Thanks for watching. I'm your friend, the ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir. If you'd like to support the channel, please click join down below. Thank you to my patrons for your continued support with the channel. I appreciate every one of you. This is your friendly ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir, signing out.